the power given to you. I want to ask today, are you living in this power? Are you living in the power that has been given to you through our Savior, Jesus Christ? For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Yes, yes. You know, that is a prophecy that we are very familiar with mm -hmm. that is said in the book of Isaiah. And we know that this prophecy, we know the child, we know the son that is spoken of in that prophecy is Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. The only begotten son of God who came from eternity mm -hmm. to our place of temporary for a specific reason, yes, yes. for a purpose. Mm -hmm. The question is today is, do you know the reason? Do you know the purpose? Do you know why it is that Jesus came to our world? All right. Now we will recall what Jesus said to Nicodemus in the third chapter of John's gospel and the 16th verse. We recall that God gave the world his only begotten son so that whoever believed in his son would not perish, right. but would have everlasting life. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this statement from Jesus to Nicodemus is the overarching point. Mm -hmm. It is the overarching reason as to why Jesus came to our world. But I want to share with you today that there are several other reasons up under that umbrella mm -hmm. as to why Jesus had to come to our world. Right. Why it was that Jesus had to be born, in other words. Mm -hmm. You see, we live in a world, as you have heard me say before, where we are constantly hounded by the devil. Come on, come on. We are constantly hounded by Satan and his agents of wickedness. And frankly, we could easily be consumed by this wickedness mm -hmm. that is present in our world. Yeah. Yet I share with you today that the Lord gave us his only begotten son so that we do not have to stand in this world alone against all that stands against us. I want to share with you today that not only can you stand against what goes against you, what opposes you, but through the power that is given to you through our savior, Jesus Christ, you can trample yeah. over all that goes against you. I don't know if you hear me today. You can trample over all of your opposition. This has all been made possible. I want you to understand it has all been made possible through Jesus Christ. In this 10th chapter of Luke's gospel, we will see there in the first verse that Jesus, he appointed 70 others, we are told, oh, yeah. to go into every city that he was about to go into himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the 70 others that we see there in that verse, I want you to know that these were 70 other followers. They were mm -hmm. other disciples, even though they were not Jesus's 12 closest disciples at that point in time, they were still his followers, yeah. just like we are his followers, just like we too are his disciples today. You are a disciple yes, of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now we will see here that they were to go into these cities before Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we are told in the ninth verse there that they were to minister the kingdom of God and that the kingdom of God was near yeah. and that the kingdom of God had come. We're in the 10th chapter of Luke's gospel All right. of this assignment. We we'll see Jesus say to the 70 there in the third verse of the 10th chapter of Luke's gospel. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, go your way. Wow. He says, behold, I send you out as lambs 
among wolves. Right. Again, we are in the 10th chapter of Luke's gospel. All right. And again, they're in that third verse. I want to point out that Jesus said to the 70 others, he said, go your way mm -hmm. as he had tasked them to minister. Right. And he said to them, behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when I read the opening of this chapter, mm -hmm. uh, think about the condition of the world at that point in time. I consider my, I consider to myself, why did Jesus say to them that they were going out among wolves? Jesus's ministry had been going by this point in time. And as we can see here at this point in time, there were others who had began to follow him. Yeah, yeah. Jesus's ministry, it had been going at that time, but we could consider that this time was a time before his ministry had been fully completed. Mm -hmm. This ministry had began. It had been at this point in time where this ministry, his mission was not yet over with. All right. And I think about how Jesus described that point in time mm -hmm. in what he was facing and in what those who were following him what they were facing as well. When he spoke of being the good shepherd in the 10th chapter of John's gospel, right. you may recall that Jesus spoke of the threats and the dangers that faced the sheep that was grazing in the field. Jesus said that before him, all that came were either thieves, robbers, or wolves. Right. So in other words, Jesus had said himself that wickedness had abounded prior to him. Yeah. Wickedness was abound and it posed a very great threat to those who were innocently grazing in the field. If you follow me, mm -hmm. see at that point in time, the world was shrouded in darkness. Yeah. Yeah. In scripture alone, we saw where man was capable of killing one who was of his own flesh, mm -hmm. who was of his own blood and Cain and Abel. Again, speaking of the wickedness that shrouded the world in darkness, we can see just how wicked mankind could be to one another through the Egyptians enslaving the children of Israel. All right. All right. Skipping ahead in time, in between the Testaments, in between the Old and the New Testament, before Christ was born again, God had gone silent for 400 years. All right. yes, sir. And during these 400 years of silence from the Lord, mm -hmm. mankind's wickedness, it grew even more wildly. Yes, sir as we continue to oppress mm -hmm. one another, as we continue to deal harshly with one another. Mm -hmm. Again, all of this was taking place before Christ was born and before his mission was fully completed. Come on. Come on. So when we consider the world before Christ was born, Again, we should consider that the world was truly covered in wickedness, oh, yeah. that the world was covered in darkness, mm -hmm. that the world, in other words, was filled with sin. Yes, sir. Those who were innocent, those who were good, we could consider to be like prey standing in this open wide field that is our world. In other words, they were powerless in the world. They were powerless against those that opposed them, right. those that would stand against them, those who, in other words, would be like predators, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. those who would seek to do them harm, right. those who may even seek to devour them. Yeah, yeah. Because they were powerless against those that did wickedness, mm -hmm. it was completely easy for them to fall victim to the predators. Yeah. Yeah. 
It would be easy for them to fall victim to, in other words, the wicked ones, if you're following me. All right. As I have preached recently and did a Bible study series on as well, again, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. All right. We wrestle against Satan. Mm -hmm. We wrestle against principalities, against powers, yeah. against rulers and yeah. spiritual hosts of wickedness mm -hmm. as well. In other words, we wrestle against Satan and we wrestle against his agents of wickedness. Yeah, yeah. So in essence, before Christ was born, mankind stood helpless in this field against all of those who were their predators, come on, come on. against all of those who consisted of Satan and his agents of wickedness. So what was apparent at this point in time was that mankind was in need of a power boost, yeah. if you will. So they, it could no longer be standing helpless in this wide open field where there was predators out in this field that could do harm to them. All right, all right. So as Isaiah prophesied, a child was born yeah. and a son was given. That son being Jesus Christ, yeah. the yeah. child and the son was given to a wayward world that was filled with all kinds of sin and a bunch of predators. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So by this point, I hope you see that Christ was needed in the world. Yeah. Yeah. He was needed in this world so that the powerless ones could receive some sort of power to be able to stand against the predators that sought to do them harm. Jesus, he came to our world and he began to minister in our world. And what Jesus ministered in our world was the word of God. Mm -hmm. He shared a light in our world that was covered, that was shrouded in darkness, in wickedness and in sin. This light was a light of hope to mankind this light was a light of power to mankind, to all of those that were standing in darkness, to all of those that were standing helpless, to all of those who were innocent in the field. Jesus was the light of the world. He was the light of hope to all of those who needed hope to be able to withstand the presence yeah. of the enemy. I don't know if you hear me here this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Now, as we continue to look here in the 10th chapter of Luke's gospel, mm -hmm. we can see the presence of the light of Jesus. We can see that the light of Jesus was being seen. We can see that the light of Jesus was being received in the world. Again, Jesus had his closest disciples. And we see here in this passage of scripture here that there were clearly several others who saw the light, mm -hmm. who accepted the light, who received this light and chose to walk in this light as well. Again, we see here in this passage of scripture that Jesus, he sent them out into this field that I've been speaking about where the enemies would be lying in wait. Yeah. And according to Jesus's own words, they will be like wolves, wolves on a hunt. Right. And I have spoken about the dangers of the predators that was in the field. But what I find to be very interesting in this passage of scripture is how Jesus sent them out into this field. This field that was filled with all kind of predators. All right, all right. Jesus says there in the fourth verse to the 70, he said, carry neither money bag, mm -hmm. knapsack, nor sandals. All right. And he said to them, greet no one along the road. Mm -hmm. So essentially there from that fourth verse, we see that Jesus was sending them out into this dangerous field that was filled with all kinds of predators, right? All right. Yeah. He was sending them out empty handed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. No money bag, no knapsack, not even sandals for their feet. Oh, yeah. 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 Now, I can't say for certain here how the 70 must have felt about doing this. I can't tell you for certain how, how they must have felt about this task. Mm -hmm. Now, we could consider that the things Jesus was telling them not to go out into the cities with here, that they were things of necessity. Yeah. My Lord. They would certainly require money, right? Because mm -hmm. we need money to get by. Yeah. I can imagine here, whatever they carried in those knapsacks, I can imagine that those was so likely some things that they would also need, that they would require as well to be able to get by. Mm -hmm. And then again, to top it all off, Jesus tells them not to even carry sandals. And I can imagine that they definitely needed the sandals to be able to get around. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so why, why did Jesus... Why did Jesus tell them to do this? Mm -hmm. Would be my question there. I don't know if anybody else has that question, but that would be my question. All right. So if I think about this for a moment, if, if we consider ourselves for just a moment here, mm -hmm. we require money in our world today. Oh, yeah. We need money in our world today. Mm -hmm. We need more money in order to be able to make it, mm -hmm. to be able to live comfortably. Yet at the very same time, there are many people who live in our world today who totally rely on their money bag. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you I don't know if you hear me here. Yeah. I don't know if you know where I'm about to go with this. Mm -hmm. There are many people who rely on their money bag, mm -hmm. their wallet, yeah. their bank. They rely on it so much that they begin to put all of their hopes mm -hmm. in the money bag. Yes, yes. In other words, they begin to put all of their faith in what money can do. Mm -hmm. Money can do everything, can't it? All right. Money solves all of our problems, don't it? Mm -hmm. In other words, their money bag could become their protection, All right. their power, mm -hmm. their God. Yeah. Do you see where I'm going with this? Mm -hmm. So why did Jesus send them out into the field, telling them not to carry a money bag or a knapsack or even their sandals? Mm -hmm. The reason is that Jesus did not desire for them to put their hopes in those things, right. not to put their faith in those things, right. not to become reliant on those things. Mm -hmm. Jesus desired for them to rely on a new power, yeah. a new power that had been given to them by him. Yes, sir. Instead of being reliant on the worldly things, Jesus desire for these new followers, these 70 followers to be reliant, to have faith, mm -hmm. to put their hope, to put their trust in him. Do you hear me here today? Yes, yes. All right. Now, as we continue through this scripture here, mm -hmm. we'll see plainly that Jesus had granted to them authority, that he had granted to them power. Again, from our key verse for today, that 19th verse, we see Jesus again say to the 70 others, he said, behold, I give you what? I give you what? Somebody don't have a Bible open. I hear someone, I hear one person saying power. It says, behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. In other words, Jesus says, I give you the power to crush mm -hmm. serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And then look at this. He says, nothing shall by any means hurt you. That is what Jesus has said to the 70 there. 
Let us understand this power here because this is magnificent. Mm -hmm. First, Jesus told the 70 again there in that fourth verse that that when they went into the cities, he told them not to to be worried about who's standing along the road Mm -hmm. by the side of the road. In, In other words, with this power. Jesus told them not to get sidetracked, All right. All n- not to get distracted. Mm-hmm. This power, it should be focused, if you will. Again, with the power that was given to them, I want you to understand today that the 70, they were on a mission. Mm-hmm. They had been given a task. Yeah, yeah. This power that Jesus had given to them He had given it to them for a reason and for a purpose. He had given them an assignment, if you will. And they were to be focused in this assignment, not getting sidetracked, not getting distracted here. This mission here, this assignment here was to speak of the coming of the kingdom of God. And the last thing that they would need to do in this assignment would be to get distracted. So Jesus tells them that in the power that was given to them, he tells them that they were to go out into this field. And then Jesus specifically tells them in this power that they are to go out into this field, into the cities there. He tells them there in the fifth verse that they are to go out in peace, Jesus says. So get this. In this field that was filled with all kind of predators here, Jesus tells the 70 to go out unarmed and tells them to go out in peace. We're talking about the power that was given to them. Jesus had given them a power that was a power of peace. We often underestimate that power. We think lightly of that power, but this power is magnificent and we'll see why it's magnificent here in a moment. Jesus, he tells them plainly there that they were to only fellowship with those who shared a similar mindset of peace. We see that there in the sixth through the eighth verse. Now, what is fascinating about this statement is that it speaks again to the power that was given to them. What is fascinating about this and what is clear to me is that through the power that had been given to them by Christ, the 70 would be able to discern in that wide open field who was a predator and who was not a predator. Mm -hmm. Do you see that there? Again, Jesus told them plainly there that they were only to fellowship with those who shared a similar mindset of peace. Mm -hmm. Those who did not share that mindset of peace, they were to do nothing with. So again, in that power, what is clear to me today is that through the power that was given to them through Christ Jesus, they would be able to discern. They would be able to differentiate between those who were predators and those who were not predators in the field. Mm-hmm. All right. Lastly, Jesus commands them there in the ninth verse in the 10th chapter of Luke's gospel. Auntie, mm-hmm. He commands them to heal the sick. Yeah, yeah. He commands them to minister that the kingdom of God had come. Mm -hmm. And again, they, the 70 were to do this to those who were again of a like mindset of peace. All right. All right. Now, oftentimes when we think of healing the sick, Mm -hmm. we often think of those who have a cough. We think of those who have a runny nose, who may have a fever or who may have a disease like the flu. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yet we should understand that the sick in this case also included those who had a spiritual infirmity as well. 
they were sick spiritually. And we see here again that Jesus had given them the power to be able to heal those who were sick, primarily sick spiritually. Again, all of this Jesus told them to do in the reliance on the power that he had given to right. them right. and not be relying on the power of something that may come through the world. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how those who were of this 70 must have felt about this task. I can't tell you for a certainty how they felt, but I can tell you what I infer from scripture, what I can guess about how they felt about this task from scripture here. Yeah, yeah. In the 17th verse here in the 10th chapter of Luke's gospel, we'll see that the 70, we'll see that they had gone out yeah. on this mission mm -hmm. and that they had returned from doing what they were tasked to do. And in their return in the 17th verse, we see that the 70, that they are filled with all kinds of joy. Yeah. <clears throat> they are excited. Mm -hmm. They are amazed at, at what they had just witnessed. What was it that had made them so excited? Right. What was it that had made them so joyful in their return to Jesus there? Mm -hmm. We will see them say in excitement to Jesus, they said, Lord, even the demons are subject yes. that they are subject to us, they say. Yes, sir. They were excited. <clears throat> All right. The 70, again, I tell you, they were amazed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were filled with all kind of joy at what they had witnessed. Mm -hmm. What they were able to, to do now. All right. They say that the demons are subject to us, not by anything that, that we did by ourselves, but they say to Jesus, in your, in your name. Yeah, yeah, my Lord. Mm -hmm. I believe that the 70 had gone out into the field where predators were laying in wait mm -hmm. with a bit of dread, yeah, yeah. with a bit of fear mm -hmm. about taking on this task. All right because they knew the kind of world in which they were living in. Oh, Jesus did not need to tell them that they were living in a world that was filled with predators, with wolves. Mm -hmm. I believe they knew this for themselves. Oh, yes. Yes. But what they did not know is mm -hmm. what they could do to the predators. <laughs> they did not know what they were capable of. All right. They did not know that they could stand up to. That they could face the predators, that they could look the predator in its eye. Mm -hmm. They did not know that they had power. They did not know that they had authority over the predator. I don't know if you hear me here today. All right. All right. Yet when they went out into this field mm -hmm. and they relied on the power that had been given to them by Christ, they saw just how powerful they could be. They saw just how powerful that they were through the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know if you hear it. Oh, yeah. Again, think about this for a moment. They knew the world that they lived in. Mm -hmm. They knew that prior before they had ever heard of Jesus, mm -hmm. before they had ever heard him teach, before they had ever heard him preach, mm -hmm. before they had ever saw him perform a miracle. These were the kinds of people that stood powerless in the field. Mm -hmm. And they knew what the predators could do to them. They knew that they were prey. And they knew that the predators could consume them. They knew that they were powerless okay. against those who sought to do harm to them. Yeah, yeah. Yet when they went out into the field, guess what they witnessed? 
they witnessed for themselves that they were no longer powerless. Mm -hmm. They witnessed for themselves that they didn't have to dread, that they did not have to fear any longer those that would try to cause great danger and harm to them. When, when they witnessed this, when they witnessed their power, when they witnessed their authority, when they witnessed that they could stand strong against the enemy, they rejoiced greatly. They shouted for great joy in the name of Jesus. I don't know if you've ever shouted for joy in the name of Jesus. I don't know if you've ever experienced the power that is in the name of Jesus, but these 70 others, they witnessed it. They knew it. They rejoiced greatly in the power that was given to them through Christ Jesus. Do you know, do you know today, do you realize that Jesus has given you this same power? Jesus, I say to you today, mm -hmm. Jesus has given you wow. the very same power that he gave to the 70. Mm -hmm. We have been given the same power in this wide open field that is our world mm -hmm. if we choose to rely on it. Right. Have you grabbed a hold of that power? Mm -hmm. Have you laid claim to that power? Do you live right. in the power that has been given to you through Christ Jesus? Mm -hmm. We have the power to walk in the peace of right. Christ yeah, yeah. in any city, mm -hmm. in any field. It don't matter how many predators are in that field. Mm -hmm. We have the power to walk in that field in peace, with peace of mind, peace of heart, if you will. Should we rely on our faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? And I tell you today that there is great power in the name of Jesus. If you do not realize this, I want you to know today about the same power that has been given to you through Christ. Some of you may ask how was this power given to me? Yeah. How did I receive this power? How did you preacher receive this power? Let's answer the question. Mm -hmm. After causing Adam and Eve to fall in the garden, we we'll see that the Lord came to the garden. All right. He called forth Adam and Adam and Eve that came forward. Mm -hmm. And after he had saw what they had done, the Lord then turned his attention away from Adam and Eve. He turned his attention to the villain, didn't he? Mm -hmm. We're told there in the third chapter of Genesis, and we see in the 14th verse that the Lord, he cursed the serpent itself to traverse the earth on his belly. The serpent there was small beans to the Lord. Mm -hmm. After cursing the serpent, the Lord turned his attention to Satan. Mm -hmm. He turned his attention to the devil, mm -hmm. who in the book of Revelation is called the serpent of old. Mm -hmm. Because again, he had entered into the serpent in the garden. Yeah, yeah. And there in the 15th verse of the third chapter of Genesis, mm -hmm. God told the devil, he told Satan that he will put enmity between him and the woman. Yes, yes. And then we'll see the Lord say to Satan that he will put enmity between his seed, the his being Satan, and her seed. Yeah, yeah. I hope you're looking at that 15th verse because what we often miss in this verse mm -hmm. is that the Lord, he spoke of the great hostility and struggle that would occur between Satan and mankind. Mm -hmm. Not only did the Lord speak of that, but God, he also spoke of, you will notice there 
her seed. Mm -hmm. Now, what I want you to pay very close attention to with this verse here is that there is no mention of a man being involved with the her seed there. It specifically says her seed. Now, if your Bible is like my Bible, the seed there has a capital S. The Lord was talking about one who was divine there in that verse. I believe we often miss that when we read that verse. I believe we often just glance at it, that we gloss over it. You see, the reason why no man is mentioned there in that verse is because God was speaking about his only begotten son. Mm -hmm. This is the earliest prophecy. This is the earliest mention of Christ in scripture, of Christ in the Bible. God tells Satan there that her seed, her seed being Jesus Christ, would bruise his head. Mm -hmm. Is what God said there about her seed. Is what God said there about Christ. And then the Lord pointed out while Satan would only manage to bruise her seed's heel, her seed again being Jesus Christ. God was likening Satan to the serpent since he had put himself in the serpent. And the old saying is that you kill a serpent, that you kill a snake by crushing his head. So the purpose for the birth of Christ was to crush the head of the devil. Mm -hmm. That old serpent of old. Mm -hmm. This, I want you to know, was done at the cross. Mm -hmm. At the cross, Jesus, he crushed the head of Satan. He sealed Satan's defeat, as you have heard me say before. Yes, Jesus died on the cross, but we know that Jesus, he rose from the grave with all power, with all authority given to him. Some of us say, preacher, this is Christmas time. Well, why are you preaching about, about resurrection all of a sudden? I do it at resurrection time where I preach about Christmas. This is the purpose of Jesus Christ. It is going to sound harsh, but Jesus was born to die. He was born to die in order to give us power, authority over Satan, to crush, to defeat Satan, that old serpent of old, while Satan would only manage to wound his heel. He died on the cross, but Jesus rose again. He was only wounded, wounded for our transgressions. That is what's said in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah in the prophecy of the suffering servant. In defeating the grave, Jesus showed that truly all power and authority belong to him. This even includes power and authority over the serpent, over the devil. You see, the 70, they experienced Jesus's authority over the wicked one Mm -hmm. and his agents. Mm -hmm. Jesus's authority over the wicked one and his agents. I want you to understand that it's not a struggle for authority. It comes easy for Jesus. We'll even notice that in the 18th verse that Jesus remarked about how those, those wicked agents, how they failed, how they fell to the 70. When he said that they fell just like the devil who fell from heaven, like lightning, they fell swiftly. Again, it's not a struggle when it comes to the enemy. When the enemy runs up on the power and authority of Jesus Christ, they fall away in a blink of an eye. That's how long lightning lasts. We barely can even see lightning. That's how fast the enemy will fall to the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. The same power and authority that now dwells inside of all of us through the death, through the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's how the power was given to you. That is how the power came to you. Because you and I as genuine believers are his children, Jesus, he preserves us. Mm -hmm. 
with his power, with his control, in other words, with his authority. Because we have believed in his power and authority, Jesus tells us there that just like the 70, Mm -hmm. he tells us that we can trample over the serpent and the scorpions. Mm -hmm. Now in nature, serpent and scorpions, they can be very lethal. Mm -hmm. They can be very dangerous. Mm -hmm. The venom of a snake, it can paralyze its victim so that the victim can be easily devoured by the snake. The sting of a scorpion, it can be very painful and its venom can be also lethal as well. Mm -hmm. So in nature, we tend to try to run away from the serpent. We we tend to to shy away from the scorpion. We don't want them biting us. We don't want them trying to sting us. We don't want anything to do with them. We do our very best to stay away from them, don't we? Mm -hmm. Spiritually speaking, however, again, we know that the serpent is Satan and the scorpions here are his agents of wickedness. And we know that they have done much to try and destroy mankind, to try and destroy all those who stand innocently in the field. Mm -hmm. And where we were once helpless to them, where it was once best for mankind to try and run away from the devil and his agents of wickedness, Jesus, he tells us not to be fearful of them anymore. As Paul said, the Lord has given us a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. God has given us a spirit of power. Of love. And of a sound mind. You don't have to be afraid. That's right. Of the devil and his agents of wickedness any longer. As as Paul said to those who who were of Ephesus, the Ephesians, Mm -hmm. he told us to put on the whole armor of God so that we can stand against Satan. We have the power today to stand against the devil. We have the power today to stand against not only the devil, but also his agents of wickedness as well. Through the power given to you, you no longer have to tread lightly Mm -hmm. when it comes to our enemy. Mm -hmm. I tell you today, because of the power that has been given to you, you can now walk on your enemy. You can step on your enemy. Not only can you step on your enemy, you can step down on your enemy. You can crush your enemy like it's a bug through the power of Jesus Christ, the power that has been given to you. In fact, there you will notice that Jesus said there in that verse that we can do this again without fear of even being hurt. Jesus said that we won't be hurt by any means. What a wonderful gift this is that we have received from the Lord through his only begotten son Mm -hmm. and being able to trample over those that have posed a very great threat and devoured mankind for so long. They can't devour us anymore. Mm -hmm. Yet as we rejoice in this gift of power that has been given to us, Jesus leaves us with another statement. He tells us there in the 20th verse, don't just be happy with that power that I have given to you to defeat the enemy. Mm -hmm. Jesus tells us there, he says, rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. What a wonderful gift Jesus Christ is to the world. As I said a long time ago, Jesus is the best gift that anyone could ever receive. Mm -hmm. We just have to open up the gift. We, we, we can't leave it up under the tree, as I said a long time ago. We must open it up. We must receive Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And through Jesus Christ, we have the gift to be able to trample over our enemies without fear through, through his power. And with this gift, we have also the ticket to yeah. the kingdom of heaven. Our names are written there in heaven. And one day, we'll be able to go and see where our name is actually written in the kingdom of heaven. I say to you today to rejoice. Let us rejoice at the birth of our Savior Jesus Christ because none of this would be possible had he not come to our world 
and delivered such a wonderful gift to us. Amen. 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 Amen.